And then the root to aphid. Um, this is definitely a big problem. It seems to be a, a bigger problem in Canada than it, it is in the United States. And one of the biggest reasons is because we have many other products on our approved list um, that we can use for rice, rice root aphid. And Canada is more limited. So on the screen, the left-hand picture is showing you some adult female aphids, and they will um, come up into the canopy and fly around. And then in the right-hand picture, you see the immature stages headed down to wreak havoc on your roots. In an indoor growing scenario, there are no male rice root aphids. They're all female and they bear their young live and will fly up, as I mentioned, into the canopy and bear their young. Then the um, baby aphids will head down towards the roots and begin to feed on the roots. This is the only part of the plant that is affected by this particular root aphid. Usually the winged females are emerging from the soil during flower, which is important to note. So scouting, once those females start flying around, they will get caught in the sticky hairs of the leaf, so it's easy to spot them. As far as the young, you can catch them traveling down the stem towards the roots by putting some sticky tape or some other sticky substance towards the soil level. And there are cultural and physical controls. Some of them are more realistic than others. Um, as I mentioned, indoor growing environments, those are very, very hospitable for root aphids. They love it. We provide year round perfect temperature. So it, as an example on the screen, I've got there 73 degrees and the population will double within one and a half days. One thing you can do to sort of negate this the aphids traveling from one crop to another is separate out your propagation vegetative and flowering crops if you can and then trying to avoid temperatures of 25 degrees celsius or above i think that's 82 or 83 degrees fahrenheit and i know for a lot of growers this is the temperature that they like to propagate and grow in so Perhaps doing some trials if you have a really bad problem um, growing at lower temperatures and, you know, play around with that. The other thing, of course, is to not reuse your soil. If you do reuse your soil, dig out the entire root ball because otherwise it will host a, a brand new infestation to your new crop. Our insecticide, BioSeries GWP, was recently awarded a supplemental label for a drench application to control root aphid. And this is very, very exciting news. Um, means you guys have another tool. You also have MET52. That's another useful tool that you can incorporate. For BioSeries, we have a cutting dip and a soil drench that were added. Um, the labeled application and rates are up on the screen, can be found um, on the supplemental label, which I believe is on our website. A little bit about BioSeries. This is a Bouveria Bassiana strain ANT03. And I'm sure there are many of you who are familiar with this particular fungi and you have used it. Um, I wanna just mention a little information about the specific strains that are always associated with biological products. And Bouveria bassiana, there are many, many different strains of this particular genus and species of fungi. It's similar to the human species. We're all homo sapiens, but there's an incredible amount of individuality amongst all of us. And the same holds true for Bouveria bassiana. So for instance, if you were to put together a basketball team and you had the option of choosing me or Michael Jordan, I guarantee you're gonna choose Michael Jordan. And that's really what we're trying to do when we manufacture biopesticides. We're seeking the best, hardiest strain to use. And BioSafe has done it 
excellent job of this with all of their biological products. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We understand how well Bouveria bassiana works. We're just improving it a great deal. This is an EcoCert product. This is your organic option or root aphid. And the one comforting thing about our, our manufacturing process is that when we put an inert package together to support our biopesticides, we are doing so in order to enhance their productivity. So for instance, in BioSeries, we have a UV protectant in there. This particular fungi is very, very susceptible to phytodegradation. So in other words, if we put a UV protectant in there, depending on the environment, we can get up to three days of activity on the leaf surface. And competing products, you're only getting a matter of hours. And if you aren't familiar with how this works, it is, as I mentioned, it's a soil dwelling fungi. I think it was isolated in Finland. And what happens is it can either land on the insect's exoskeleton or it can be ingested. And then it jams its feeding tube into the insect and it eats it from the inside out. It's really sci-fi. It's very cool. And when it, it gets to the stage on the left, you can see the, um, the fungi presenting on the exoskeleton. You have to have really perfect environmental conditions to see that, but that's eventually what happens. So the nice thing about BioSeries and this particular strain is that this is ethnogenic for all developmental stages of insects including diapausing insects. So if you've ever tried to kill a diapausing two-spotted spider mite, good luck. And this product will do it.